So this week we're going to talk about conflict and it's really important to talk about conflict in management because sometimes it's not a bad thing, okay? To have a little bit of conflict in management is okay because it allows people to talk. One of the number one things that a manager has got to be is a good communicator. And sometimes that means having a tough conversation with your employees. And that might lead to conflict issues and fights. And I'm not talking about fist fight, you know, rah, but I'm talking about people voicing their opinion. It's very important as a good supervisory manager that we allow people to talk to us, that we allow our employees to share their feelings. And sometimes that's how we become better leaders. Okay. We understand what people are going through and what kind of conflict there is in our organization. We really can then start to feel empathetic. I think we talked about last week so we really can start to feel um, power you know power with our subordinates and power with the people that we're leading if we can understand conflict so a little bit of conflict is okay and there's a whole degree you can get like a whole college degree on managing conflict it's a really big subject in the world of management and business because there are different ways that you can deal with uh, working with people through conflict and some of the reasons why we uh, we are we have conflict in our business is because we might have different goals our goals may not align with the management goals our goals as an employee may not sync up with the goals of the management or the goals of the organization. And you're going to laugh, but I've been fired many times from many jobs because my goals did not align with my boss. <laughs> so it's okay. I'm not telling you to go get fired from your job, but it's okay sometimes to have that conflict and to understand that maybe that's not the organization you want to work for. If you're always, um, you know, butting up against your, your organization and you don't have the same goals. I think right now coming out of this crisis, I think we all have the same goal now coming out of this crisis, and that's getting back to work, and that's getting back to somewhat normal, getting back to working and producing. I think we all have that goal right now. So supervisory managers are going to be able to come back now, and they should listen to their employees. We've talked about that, and start now. Everybody's got the same value right now to get the company back in sync and start selling products and start producing again. Okay, so now we all have the same goals. Communication, if there's a miscommunication in business, then it definitely leads to conflict. If you're not talking to your bosses or your bosses aren't sharing information on all levels, okay, then it starts conflict. People don't feel comfortable in their job and they feel like they're left out and then that can cause uh, the budding of heads, you know, that can cause anger and, and frustration which leads to conflict. Structure, if an organization doesn't have a good structure, you know, and that's that whole idea that there's, there's, some, there's some structure, you know, we have the building blocks, you know, look at the building blocks. If your organization has pretty good structure that everybody understands, then there's least likely to be conflict, okay? Personal, could be personal issues of conflict and change. We don't like to change. I think next week we're gonna talk about resistance to change and why people just don't like to change. That's just part of who we are. We like things the way they are and change is really, really hard for some of us and then that can lead to conflict. So a good supervisor is going to be aware of all the things that are, uh, you know, affecting their uh, subordinates, and they're going to see if they can hit that stuff head on. So some of the styles, these are some styles, so different management styles of those who deal with conflict. And if you look at the first one, it's avoiding. Okay, what do you think that is? That's like just avoiding the problem, okay? That's not one of the greatest ways to manage conflict, but avoiding it, okay? When you're dealing with issues, you just kind of table them. Okay, we'll talk about that at another time. We don't have the time right now. We don't have the luxury right now as managers. We don't have time as a luxury to get back into business right now. So I think any manager that's going to use avoidance maybe shouldn't be a manager anymore. This is just not the time for that. There's too many things going on. Then you also have accommodating. This is accommodating, okay? And this is what appropriate when things, you know, are going pretty good. 
and the other party is right, and then you can kind of agree. So we have to have a little bit of accommodating, and that's allowing our subordinates to give them a little more of that power. Remember we talked about power a few weeks ago, giving them that power to, and we'll, we can be accommodating. We'll, we'll allow you to make those decisions with us, okay? Not for us, but with us. Everything now becomes a team spirit, okay? And we can accommodate that. And then there's also forcing. This is forcing behavior and conflict. And to me, forcing, this is like, like um, I would think, like think of um, ambulance drivers, firefighters, people that are on the front line, for front line, you know, um, for front line folks that are putting out fires and police officers and all of these folks. I would think that a lot of the forcing is, is in their style because there really isn't room for error. So in times when there really isn't a lot of room where it's life or death on the line, I think this forcing type of conflict style is okay in certain situations. And this is, look, we don't have time. We just need to move forward. And that would be like our, our um, you know, frontline responders, you know, our, our responders that are out there, they're taking care of people and there just might not be time to negotiate. Okay, because negotiation is very important. We are humans. We have conflict. We are never always going to be on the same page. That's what we always say all the time. We're not on the same page. So we need to talk. And that's negotiation. But there's not always going to be time for negotiation. I think right now a lot of businesses are making very quick decisions, regardless of what the outcome is going to be in, in regards to conflict. You know, we're communicating our decisions. Schools have closed now. You guys know schools are closed um, until, the end of the, until the end of the summer. So my students, my kids are not going back, and those of us in high school and co um, high school are not going back to the physical classroom. So that was, a, that was a decision made by the government, and now Pinellas County Schools has to act quickly. And it might mean that they've got to make quick decisions that may not have room for negotiation for teachers. Okay, restaurants closing. A lot of you were in the hospitality industry or getting a hospitality degree. Now that these restaurants have closed and theme parks have closed and hotels have closed, it's really affecting that business. And unfortunately, we really can't resolve that conflict until things start to get back to normal. So at this point, we're all in a situation where we've been told what to do. And there really has not been a lot of room for negotiation. Okay, and we'll get there. I'm hoping that... Um, I'm hoping that when all of this is over with, there's some kind of like either a union or a meeting of the minds for all the hospitality groups, and they can talk about these things and maybe not help prevent what happened, but maybe if something like this happens again, what can we do differently? Okay, and then we also have compromising. You guys know what a compromise is. I compromise with my children all the time. If you do good, I'll let you go outside. <laughs> if you do good, I'll buy you what? An iTunes card. My son loves to play video games and he uses the iTunes cards to buy. I don't know what he's buying, but it seems like a waste of money, but that's okay. <laughs> it makes him happy. So you do a good job. Think of compromising as a contract. And some people will write out a contract. If you are working in a large organization, you might have like a job description or a job um, form or a job duties form, and that might be part of the contract and this compromising contract. If you do well for me, here's what I give you in return. And remember, we talked about that in leadership and motivation last week, that it's that give and take, it's that transaction. So a compromise is a transaction. So that's the type of leader who uses either reward or uses something that that other person needs to get the work done. It's a compromise, okay? And then you also have collaborating. And collaborating is very, very important. This is so important right now. We need to get together and we need to talk and we need to see if we can collaborate. Remember brainstorming? You did the brainstorming exercise for me. And that's what we can do now. We need to get together. We need to brainstorm. And then we need to collaborate. Get our, all our ideas on paper in that brainstorming session. And then we can collaborate. Work together. Teams, okay? Teams are still very important in business. I'm not the kind of person who likes to be on a team all the time because I'm very strong-willed. But 
teams are still very important in business and everybody collaborating, bringing their ideas to the table, bringing everything right up front so there's no issues and then working together to solve the problem. And that's what I'm hoping will happen with all of the theme parks that are closed and the hospitality workers who are out of business. I'm hoping that they can all get together in some kind of forum and really talk about what happened, what, what can we do differently in the future to help everybody, okay? Now, here's different types of managers who cope with difficult behavior. So the type of manager and the way you respond to people who are being behaving badly says a lot about you as a manager, too. So we have the hostile aggressives. <laughs> Okay, these are the people that use self-assertive language, they ad avoid direct confrontation, and that's a lot of us. A lot of us do not want to be in a conflict situation. That's 100% normal. We don't want you to come to us, engage in us in a conversation when it's going to hurt us. So we avoid it. So we have the hostile aggressives, the people who are very, very ready, ready to fight. You know, if it's all about me, it's all about me. Okay, if you are in a big office, let's say you work in a big office and your manager comes in and they walk past you and they close the door, they slam the door and all of a sudden you feel like, uh oh, what did I do wrong? And then the manager you may find out that the manager just may have been having a bad morning and it's not about you but the hostile aggressives we're going to be the kind of people it's like me that's I'm, I'm just like this who are going to be very defensive oh my gosh they're talking about me oh my gosh it's my fault oh my gosh okay so we want to kind of calm down and take take a deep breath okay and then you also have then you have the complainers the complainers the people who just complain about everything and everything is a crisis, okay? <laughs> I think we can all agree that right now things are a crisis, okay? So we can complain. You can complain right now. I want to complain. I complain every day to my kids and my husband. They're tired of hearing about it, okay? So we can complain, but we need to state the facts. We need to use some kind of problem solving mode that we can get people together. So actually complaining right now is okay because we need to hear from everybody. We need to hear how did this affect you? What can we do moving forward? But everything has just got to be positive. So with all of these different conflict styles, there still needs to be that positive environment. Okay, we still need to stay together. We need to talk about it. These are tough conversations, and they may not happen in one day. It may be that everybody has a brainstorming session, they get all their complaints out, and everybody, and then maybe there's a couple of days that you go back to think about things, and then the decisions are made. It doesn't have to be made right away. But it's very important that we understand that conflict in many situations is okay, and that's what drives our businesses forward. It's how the manager is gonna deal with it. It's how the attitude of the manager the attitude of the leader that's going to help us move forward, okay? And then you got the clams, the clams. They call them the clam, like a clam. You know, a clam opens their mouth and closes it and opens it and closes it. You've seen the clam with the water coming through. And that's people who are patient, be patient. They ask more open-ended questions. They're, um, you know, if no one then responds, then they're just going to go ahead and give their opinion. And that's okay, too. So we need a little bit of all these types of people when we're dealing with conflict. We just need to be able to identify what type of conflict and what type of attitude and behavior, and then we can get a little bit more of an idea of um, how we can solve the problem, okay? Let's talk about, you guys like this graphic? Good morning, let the stress begin. And this lady's all happy, okay? That's how I feel most mornings <laughs> these days. I have to get up, I have to smile, brush my teeth, Yell at my kids. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> my boys actually slept in a little bit later this morning. And I think it's just because we all went swimming last night. We were tired. But I think we're getting to a point right now where the stress is really building up. Okay. And we need to get, we need to take a deep breath like everyone's been telling us. But let the stress begin. If you're the kind of person who can really talk to people, communicate with people, you need to get these things out and talk with people and talk with your subordinates. And if you're the manager, it's important then to understand all that. So let's talk a little bit about, here's, here's the cost and the benefit. So there actually, there are some benefits to stress in the workforce, believe it or not. Of course, we know the costs, they can lead to disease, they can lead to people being sick, 
I don't know if you know, but one of the leading losses for most businesses is absenteeism. That's people just not going to work. That's one of the greatest costs to business. It's one of the, the most lost leaders that businesses have each year are people just not coming to work. We call it absenteeism. And usually the absenteeism is a result of sickness or it's a result of people being stressed. They're starting to prove that right now. And there is actually a disease, a, a stressed out disease now. So you can say, I don't know what they call it, but there's an actual diagnosis now if you are stressed out. You can go to your company and you can say, I'm stressed out. And they actually can, you can you're covered on their health insurance. So we have identified the fact that people are stressed out and it is a disease now, okay? And it keeps people from going to work. So they believe the stressed out person can't function as effective and they can't lead a more balanced life. Now that we're home right now, we're in school and we're home, okay, we're doing school online, we're doing our work online, we're, we're changing that whole work-life balance, if you guys have ever heard of that. A work-life balance is when everything is flowing together smoothly. Well, right now, things are not smooth. Right now, we have been disrupted. And we're learning how to cope with it. And we're doing pretty good. I think most of us are doing pretty good. But now this work-life balance, as soon as we get back to our regular jobs, we start leaving our houses and get back to what we were used to, then the work-life balance is going to change again. So right now, companies and managers, especially supervisory managers, because remember, they're answering to the CEO and they're answering to the people below them, their subordinates. So they're kind of stuck in the middle. And they need to be ready for their employees coming back and asking questions and asking for, you know, a break. You know, give me a break. As a professor, I have students who have emailed me and told me that they're struggling. And can they have a little more time on their paper? Can they have a little more time on their homework? Absolutely. Absolutely. I understand that our work-life balance has all been, um, you know, up, up, uh, upended. And for some people, they're doing very well. And other people are really struggling with that stress. So some of the benefits of stress, some of them in a business situation, stress actually drives some people to work harder. I have worked for small companies, small startup companies, you know, where there's only maybe 30 people and there's a lot of stress and there's a lot of things going on because you're building your business and that stress energizes people. So on the positive side of stress in business, it can energize people. It can make people work harder. Okay, maybe not more efficiently. Okay, but it is it is a driving a driving method. A lot of people who are home right now who are doing their work from home have been motivated by this stress to do even more work or to do a different type of work. If you're a business owner and you can't open your doors, but you can reach out to the community, a lot of people are doing that. Business owners, there's a gentleman last week who gave out you know, 1,200 spaghetti and meatballs, okay, 1,200 spaghetti and meatball meals. That's Grazzi in St. Pete, and he's a business owner. Of course, he can't open his doors right now to the public, and he said, I've got the money. I'm okay. I'm doing fine. Me and my family are doing fine. This is my way of giving back to the public. There are a lot of businesses who are hosting web calls or who are hosting town halls, trying to get people to kind of share their ideas, share their frustrations, and find out now what we need moving forward. So sometimes then, um, you know, stress can be a powerful motivator. And when you're working in a small business, this is usually like in a small business where things are always on a deadline. I know people who are only happy when they're on a deadline, okay, when they have got to get jobs done. I, I know people that they're only happy when they're stressed out. <laughs> And you know people like that too, probably. So in business, stress can have a positive, but we all know that we need still ways of dealing with stress because it's not always a positive situation. And there's only so long that we can operate at that level, okay? You guys know that. So some of the major causes of stress, a big life event, okay? Something that causes um, us from, you know, from being able to act normally, which is exactly what's going on for most of us right now. We get into a routine, we feel good about this, and now everything is disrupted. 
that's a huge stress factor. And that leads to illness, that leads to people uh, being depressed. We have a lot of depressed people right now, um, and that's all a big factor of that. So the type A behavior is the person who wants to get everything done. That's that person who's motivated by stress, that type A. I'm a type A. If you have ever done the Myers-Briggs, and I'll put a little note in the, uh, in the notes, I'll send you guys a link. Uh, Myers-Briggs, it's a questionnaire that you can fill out to find out what kind of person you are and that type A personality is going to be the one that's always hyper that's always moving forward that's motivated by stress motivated by chaos we say okay they perform better in an environment where things are crazy where things are unstructured okay and then you get the type B behavior and this is the person who's a little bit more calm Okay, this is the introvert. We call this person the introvert, and some of us are introverts. And this is the person who's able to be calm, take a step back, and take a look at everything that's going on. And they can be a little bit more uh, quicker, not as quick to judge people, and a little bit more introverted. And we can think about it, let's talk about it. So, right now, I personally believe we need a little bit of both. We need the type by A people who are freaking out, <laughs> and then we need the type B people who can help us then with that whole brainstorming process, okay, with that whole idea that we need to take a deep breath, we need to lay everything out before we make our decision. So before we move forward, kind of what's happening right now in the country, um, different states and different governors are making the decision to either stay closed or to stay open, and it's going to be put in their hands. So right now, they're trying to go get as much information from their people from the people that are in their states to get an idea of when they feel that it's time to reopen, okay? So it's not okay, it's okay to be a type A. Um, I'm not gonna go over all of these. I know this slide has a lot of stuff on it. I'm gonna go over a couple of these, but I wanna make sure when you rewatch the video that you have some of these, um, some of these stressors on here. So these are work-related factors that cause excessive stress. Okay, and we'll go over a couple of them. We talked about a highly centralized organization with, with decision making at the top. And we talked very briefly about decision making. So if you're working for an organization where all of the decisions are made by the CEO and the subordinates and the people at the bottom never get an opportunity to be involved in that decision making process, that creates a lot of stress, okay? Simply put, the supervisor is you know, they have the information from the CEO, but unfortunately are unable to include their subordinates in any decision making. And that, that really drives stress. That makes people very uncomfortable. We really, a at, at hundred years ago, you wouldn't question your boss. You wouldn't say to your boss, hey, I don't like this idea. You wouldn't do that. Maybe even 25 years ago, okay? It hasn't even been that long where there was a strict, strict structure and you wouldn't say to your boss, hey, I don't like this or hey, that stresses me out. Now you can. Now you can go to your boss, your, your supervisor and say, hey, I, I don't feel comfortable. This isn't working, okay? And if it's a kind of organization that really cares about their people, they're empathetic, the leaders are uh, people-centric, we've talked a little bit about that, then they'll listen to you and they'll make the changes that they need to make, okay? IKEA, I talk about IKEA, you know the I-K-E-A, the company, they are the ones with the furniture, you buy the cheap plastic furniture and you have to put it together at home. <laughs> Ikea, they listened to their employees. They had their employees were telling them, and this is a, a company out of Switzerland. You know, they're not an American company. They're out of another um, country. But their employees complained about all kinds of working conditions, uh, the way they were treated, the way they felt uh, pregnant women. If you got pregnant, pregnant women felt like they weren't being given a, a, an opportunity. So they have changed. I'm sorry, they're Swedish. Ikea is Swedish. I'm sorry, shame on me. Uh, same part of the world. World, a different country. IKEA is Swedish and they started saying to themselves, you know what, we're going to start taking care of our employees. And they added more time off if you have a baby. They added better working conditions. Um, and you're going to see that in Amazon. Amazon is, is a big company, okay, but they don't necessarily 
treat their employees the greatest. And we've heard, of, we've heard that a lot. So Amazon really has a long way to Walmart. If you know Walmart, if you follow Walmart story, they're also another big uh, corporation who has been, you know, um, in trouble with treating their employ employees poorly. And, and Walmart has a lot of frontline employees, a lot of people who are making minimum wage just maybe a little bit more than minimum wage and these are the people we really need to listen to so let's just go over a couple if you go all the way down you have a lack of clarity with respect to the organizational goals okay so if you're if you're working for a company and you really don't know what the goals of the organization and you're never included and you have no you have no personal interest in that company that leads to stress as well Okay, and don't, don't, don't think of people, maybe people that work on an assembly line, let's say the people who, who package the materials in an Amazon warehouse, let's say, don't assume that they don't care. You know, and I think for a long time, supervisory managers just assumed, well, you come in, you do your work, you pack your boxes, have a nice day. We don't care what these people think because they don't care what we think. And that's not true. When you start asking your employees what they care about, you, you'd be amazed at what they'll tell you. And a lot of these organizations are starting to listen. So communication, down here we've got again, poor working conditions lead to stress, okay? Poor communication, not communicating with your boss, okay? And a lack of structure. And that's just really exactly what it means. You have a job description, but no one pays attention to it. You're just working all over the place. You're doing all kinds of jobs. You have no idea if it's even a part of your job. So you've got job descriptions. You know, well, what is my job description? I know a lot of friends who've lost jobs because they've gone to their boss and they've said, look, I don't even know what my job is anymore. Can you help me out? Because I'm very stressed. And they either get fired <laughs> or they, the manager will take the time to say, okay, well, well, let's sit down and let's talk about it. And right now, there's going to be a lot of those tough conversations. People are going to say, what is my job description? A lot of people I know right now are doing jobs they never thought they'd do before because their companies have had to shift focus and their companies have said to everybody, please be patient. You may not have been hired to do this job, but right now we really need you to do this job. Okay, right now we really need you to focus on something different. And then when things go back to somewhat normal, you can go back to what you're used to doing. And for some people, this is going to be a great opportunity. This is going to be a great opportunity because some people you're going to realize, wow, I never realized that you were so good at this. So this is also going to be an opportunity for people to shine. People that would not have normally done these type of jobs jobs are really going to start to shine and, and managers are going to go wow I never knew that you could do this I never ever knew that you had this skill also so this is a good time for supervisory managers to look at different skills look at new skills that emerge from this okay and technical glitches um, technical issue with computer interfaces yeah a lot of companies will will put in like a new computer system and then they just don't train everybody well <laughs> and this can lead to everybody just being stressed out and not you know so let's talk about relaxation and I know a lot of us are at home doing yoga doing some deep breathing doing all of the things that we can do to try to stay calm and they actually have this this is right from the textbook uh, for the supervisory and and those managers that really take the time to work with their employees and and give them some ideas there are some big companies that have like a nap room where you could go take a nap that's the kind of company I want to work for <laughs> there are some companies that will have an exercise gym so you can go in and you can exercise. If you need a break, you can go exercise. There's other companies who've put in like a kiosk that has food, that has like chips and drinks and stuff like that, where you can just go up and get a chip or a drink whenever you feel like it. And I guess it gets charged back to your uh, employee, to your department. Uh, there are organizations that have like video games, table games that it, off to the side where you can go and help out. And I've even seen some companies who have, a refrigerator full of beer 
<laughs> beer bottles if you want to go have a beer, okay? So I've seen companies like that too. They have like the ice hockey, air hockey games and foosball tables and beer, you know, and you can go grab the PlayStation if you want to take a half hour off and play Call of Duty and shoot up a bunch of people if they have that. So don't laugh, it's true. So some companies are really starting to say, well, how can we de-stress our employees? We make them come to work for nine hours a day, sometimes 10 hours a day, how can we do that? So you can do uh, stretching, relaxing postures. This is all falls under the realm of yoga. So whether you believe in yoga, you don't have to be you know, transcendental to believe in, in relaxing and stretching. Stretch your body out. Many of us are walking right now. Many of us are going out and taking our kids outside. I saw on Sunday like 50 different families walking their kids, riding bikes, uh, those kinds of things. And there are some organizations um, in, in like in a downtown area right now, a lot of big cities have bikes that you can rent and scooters that you can rent. So you literally just swipe your little credit card or you use an app on your phone and you can grab a bike and ride it to where you wanna ride it and leave it. So some people are being encouraged to walk to work, ride their bike to work. Okay, these are things that, you know, a lot of people don't like to exercise. You'd be surprised at how many people think that the word exercise is a bad word, okay? Don't tell me to exercise. Ah, I don't want to exercise. No, leave me alone. There's a lot of people like that. But maybe simply doing some stretches, okay? Maybe even like, you know, turning your neck, maybe closing your eyes, taking a deep breath. Taking a deep breath. Blow it out. Maybe turn your neck. Maybe then turn your neck to the other side. Okay, real soft. Just move softly. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath out, okay? Then come back to center, open your eyes, okay? Even then, that just makes you feel a little bit better. My kids in school now, they all have like 15 minutes every day of mindfulness. They call it mindfulness. They don't want to call it meditation because they might offend somebody. So it's mindfulness. And it's usually about a 10-minute break they get where they have to do some deep breathing and just kind of think quietly to yourself. And I know a lot of us do this. Those of us who are very successful in our jobs and in our business, we know the value of taking us a few minutes out of our day, even if it's just a few minutes, okay? So here's some ideas. Imagery. I see, you see imagery down here in the corner? This is what they're, they're encouraging the children, is as you're sitting still for 10 minutes, imagine yourself on a beach. Imagine yourself uh, walking up a mountain. Imagine yourself and, and yeah, and just that quietness and breathing. And maybe there's a little bit of soft music in the background. Um, diffusers, you know, the diffusers that blow the, the essential oils. If you like that, you can put one of those in your office. I have one here in this room. I have a diffuser and I have it on eucalyptus right now, eucalyptus. And I'm going to be honest with you, we're all letting, we're not sneezing as much right now all of us and my husband said to me he said how come we're all breathing really good right now and it's because I've been I've been running this eucalyptus and if you know anything about eucalyptus it does it opens up the breathing okay it opens up your nose and your breathing okay and it makes you feel good okay strategies that make you feel really good savor the moment okay act happy act happy even if it's so hard if you're having the worst day in the universe act happy okay and then seek work and leisure that engage your skills if you're the kind of person who's super creative and you're stuck home right now just pull out the pencils get some colored pencils if you don't have any you can order some uh, you can go pick them up at Target we'll hold them at the curbside for you um, Joanne's fabrics all these places do something creative I ordered a sewing machine and it got delivered last week and we're just going to make some things we don't know yet maybe we'll make some masks because when we do go to the grocery store we've been wearing a mask i've got old fabric i've got all kinds of things we can fix uh you know the glue gun a glue gun goes a long way so order a glue gun or find your glue gun and create stuff if you're a if you're creative maybe you start a new story my seven-year-old is writing a story about the teenage turtles the teenage mutant ninja turtles okay he's writing a story and it's helping with his writing and his imagination okay uh, get some rest 
get some rest. This opportunity of us being home right now for people who have been burning what we call burning the candle at both ends, those type A people who are always stressed, okay, here's an opportunity for us to get some rest. And give priority to close relationships. Make sure you're keeping in touch with your friends and family via uh, FaceTime or Zoom, whatever you guys are using to communicate. Make sure you stay in touch with your family. And it's not only important because, you know, time is so precious, but we do have a lot of very sick people out there right now. And maybe even, maybe a project which you can do is you can FaceTime with someone you don't even know. Maybe, maybe find uh, some elderly people maybe who are struggling and you can do a FaceTime and brighten their day, okay? So um, take up exercise and we talked about that yoga. <laughs> so time management, let's talk quickly about time management because this is one of the biggest reasons why we fail as managers. We just don't manage our time. We have so many things going on. We call it too many balls up in the air, okay? And they're all going to come down. That whole idea that gravity is going to pull them all down on us at the same time. So we really, if we don't manage our time, we're setting ourselves up for failure. Remember we talked about failure last week and the week before. Failure is a big part of why we don't uh, you know, why we're not good managers, why we can't be good supervisory managers. So here's an opportunity it, what, now that we're home is to start some good habits, which a lot of us have good habits already, but, you know, failure to set a priority, just if you have to buy yourself a paper calendar and list your priorities, or maybe you use a Google calendar and you put your appointments in there, but set your priorities. Don't fill yourself up with so many things that you just can't you can't, um, you know, you can't do good at anything, you know, pick, if you're the kind of person like me, pick one thing that you can really do good right now and focus on that, okay? Uh, indecision, it leads to, it leads to this failure to delegate. Remember, we talked about delegation in our first lecture, okay? If we are so stressed out as managers and we have way too many things going on, we have, a, we cannot delegate. We're too stressed out. We've gotten to a point where we don't even know where to start delegating, okay? So this is a big stressor. Time management is a huge reason why managers fail because we just don't know what to do. Now, there are books online you can buy. There are worksheets and all kinds of webinars and all kinds of things out there that can help managers manage their time. So if you're the kind of person, like I've been a little scatterbrained because I'm getting a lot of phone calls, I'm getting a lot of people who want help right now. And if you're like me, maybe it's time to take a short course or just maybe watch a webinar or maybe there's a book online on the Kindle I can buy that'll give me like a worksheet to track my time. Kind of what you did for me the first time. You managed a process, you wrote out the process and then you made some changes to that process. You improved upon that process. This is the time to do that. And the time management books that are out there, so many, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of books that can help you manage your time better, okay? And then set priorities, okay? Set a priority. Don't procrastinate. Procrastinate simply means that you know what you got to do and you wait till the last minute anyway. <laughs> That's procrastination. So set those priorities. And if you can only do a little bit each on a project each day, that's okay. But if you procrastinate and wait till the absolute deadline, you will almost always be stressful and you almost always will fail, okay? Manage your emails and your phone calls. Right now, we're getting so many emails. Maybe you turn your email off for an hour a day. Maybe you just don't look at your emails for a day. Or maybe you put them into files. You know, you can separate some of your emails and you can put them into, you know, things I got to do right now, things that can wait a couple of days, Okay, and things that can wait a whole week. <laughs> and maybe you manage it that way. Um, learn to delegate. We talked about that. If you are just totally overwhelmed with everything, that's when you need to start letting people take some stuff off your plate. Okay, handle people who drop in, which we're not seeing that as much right now. But be decisive. Stick to your decision-making procedures. However you make decisions, if it's working for you, you need to stick with that. Now, if you need to improve your decision making, there are lots of uh, things that we can do to learn to be better decision makers as well. Get organized, stay on top of everything, and try to avoid distractions. Um, I've done a lot of Zoom calls lately with people, and some people were in their car. 
they were driving and I don't know how you can attend a webinar and drive at the same time I would imagine you're not getting much out of that now you can listen on your um, Bluetooth so maybe they're listening on the Bluetooth when I'm walking or when I'm driving I like to listen to podcasts and that's just audio only and there's so many there's millions of podcasts now and I like to listen to them and I've got somebody in my ear that's telling me a little bit about business and management I listen to the really boring ones but there are a lot of fun ones out there if you like comedy they have comedy they have people who talk about movies people who talk about music so if you want the lighter side of podcasts you can have that too but I would never in a million years attend a webinar walking or driving or I, I don't want to I don't want to mix those up you know when you're walking you should be relaxing okay listen to the music or talking to a friend if you can walk with a friend or a family member you should not be listening to an educational webinar <laughs> okay so try to manage your time a little more effectively and try not to be distracted if you want to attend a really good webinar or you're in class right now and you guys are paying attention 100 percent that's where you need to be so you set your priorities you know that on thursday morning i've got a 9 a.m webinar with my class and maybe on tuesday afternoon I have a two o'clock class um, I have a two o'clock class today and it's only about 35 minutes I don't keep the students very long it's really just an opportunity for them to share the project that they're working on right now but I need them to be focused and I've had some students call me and they're on their bicycle or they're out on a boat on the water and that's just not effective okay so try to be right now try to keep clear of distractions when you're doing something that's really requires your attention you know I tell my kids all the time you have one assignment to do it's gonna only take you a few minutes and then as soon as we're done with that we'll take a break we'll go for a walk whatever we need to do right now we have the lux luxury to relax we can get on a web call we can do our classwork and we can we have that luxury now because we can't go anywhere to take a break okay so if you're feeling overwhelmed I am feeling completely overwhelmed right now. There are so many things going on. And for the other courses that I teach, the grades are coming up. There's only a week and a half left of class. So all of the students now are struggling to get their work done because we, we've been so stressed. So right now there's going to be a big push at the end of the term for everybody to get their work in. And as professors, we're just going to have to be patient and we're going to have to work. Some students are calling me, and we're just going to have to work with them individually and get them back on track. And hopefully things will get back to somewhat, some kind of normal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is for your assignment this week, I'm going to send Miss Ross a couple of questions, just a couple things. I'd like you to like, I'd like you to list some of the things that you do that keep you from being distracted okay and then I have like I'll have a, just a maybe one or two questions about um, maybe delegation or about conflict on there for you they won't be too difficult so that's what I'll do I'll send that to Miss Ross today and she can get that out to you guys and what I'd like to do is just have you take a deep breath you know relax we'll get through this We're you're learning a lot um, you're, you're just you're soaking in a lot this is a lot to throw at you and I apologize if it's all coming in big chunks but it's a lot to learn and I think we're doing a really good job I think we're able to take the time and learn something new and again if you want any extra management help or leadership help or how to delegate or how to set a schedule there are so many books and so many free resources online that will help you and I'll send you guys a link there's one that's mind m-i-n-d tool tools t-o-o-l-s mind tools Dot com that has a bunch of free resources for managers who want to uh, learn how to be better decision makers that uh, how to be more empathetic there's a lot of tools on that website you don't have to pay don't click on the paid version but there are a lot of free enough tools free videos free tools for you to get some uh, if time management is a big issue for you as you're as you're going through school or as you're going through business you know take care of that now there are a lot of different things different types of calendars and different types of systems and software that can help you 